Okay, so because um, we actually don't study the end of um, the Gospel of Mark, we don't really study uh, uh, that. The last Bible study is our last Bible study because we don't. So because we don't do anything to finish up Mark, I just want to give you guys, at least for you Bible study leaders, um, kind of a just wrap everything up, talk about the ending of the last few chapters of uh, the Gospel of Mark, and see where it goes. Um, but basically, we have. Let me just kind of recap the entire gospel um, up until this point. So we have in the beginning of the gospel of Mark, Mark says, this is the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. So he puts that forth. Jesus is the Son of God. During the first few chapters, Jesus is introduced as the Son of God. There's a voice from heaven in his baptism that says, You are my son. And different people are like, You are the Holy One of God. And like the demons say that and, and stuff like that. So, um, and then the first, um, and then there's some conflict with the, the religious authorities at that time. Um, and so Jesus kind of pokes at them, challenges the religious authorities. There's a lot of uh, language about uh, the political movements and and what the, like the word gospel is a political word in and of itself about military victory um stuff like that so then he has his disciples and he has there's a constant question that starts pop popping up is like who is jesus who is jesus actually so the gospel the the author the author of the Gospel of Mark already has given us as the audience the answer. He's the Son of God, and that's what he wants us to know. And so, but the the the, um, the disciples don't know that. There's a lot of people in the Gospel, characters in the Gospel that don't know that. So there's some miracles happening, and each one is like, who is this that calmed the wind and the waves? Who is this that doing this and that? And the disciples are not really getting it. And Jesus is doing more and more miracles. And he's like, oh, I'm greater. He's like feeding the 5,000. Um, he's he's showing the disciples that he's bigger than Moses and stuff like that. But the, the disciples don't quite get it yet. And then it builds up until Jesus asks uh, his disciples, who do the people say I am? And then Peter's the, 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 the disciples are like, oh, well, some people say you're Elijah. Some people say you're uh, a prophet or whatever. But who do you say? And Peter says, you are the Christ. You are the Messiah. And it's like, yes, they get it, right? But then immediately, Jesus starts telling them, what is the Messiah all about? And they don't get it. They don't understand that the Messiah is about suffering. So Jesus has to under teach them about what the Messiah is all about. And then there's the transfiguration where God himself says, this is my son. This He's the son of God. And so the disciples are like, oh, wow. wow. They really don't understand. And Jesus starts teaching them, okay, I'm the son of God. I'm the Messiah. But what does that mean? The son of man must suffer and die. Right? Take up your cross and you guys have to come along with me. So then at that transition point, after they discover who he is, he starts teaching them about what does it mean to suffer and the fact that he has to suffer. And so he's on his way and it keeps saying he's on his way to Jerusalem as he's teaching them these things. So he's teaching them, oh, to be the greatest is about serving and it's about suffering as he's going towards Jerusalem in order to die. And then we build up, and he finally enters Jerusalem triumphantly, right? All the people are like, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest heaven. And giving palm trees and laying them down at his feet, welcoming Jesus into, into Jerusalem. And Jerusalem, Jesus goes to the temple, has this confrontation at the temple. And he starts challenging the religious authorities, poking at them. And there they you know fight back and they want to kill him and then it's constant conflict with them in the temple and jesus is like trashing the temple saying that the temple is done basically and now it's all about jesus and jesus is going to usurp the authority of the temple take over that authority and then and that's what we talked about the last bible studies right and so what happens is that's where we kind of left off um and then what happens is Obviously, they're not, and the Sanhedrin is not happy about this. Um, and eventually, they do plot and they arrest Jesus. And um, most of us, we know the stories, you know, but um, so I'm not going to go into a huge amount of detail, but I do want to point certain things out. So, in chapter, uh, so Jesus has the Last Supper 
with the disciples in chapter 14. And then Judas betrays Jesus. And then what's interesting is in chapter 14, verse uh, 53, Jesus is taken before the high priest, uh, the chief priest, the elders, and the teachers of the law. And Peter is following at a distance. And then it has the trial of Jesus before the Sanhedrin. Um, so Jesus, they ask Jesus a bunch of questions. Jesus says um, some great answers. Well, we'll get we'll get into it in a little bit, and then it goes back to Peter, and Peter's in the courtyard. So this is a classic again Mark and sandwich where it talks about Peter following like trailing behind Jesus. Oh, and then Jesus at the trial, and then oh, what happened to Peter? And then Peter denies Jesus three times. Right. So this is a classic Mark and sandwich. So let's look at it a little bit. So, the chief priests and the whole Sanhedrin were looking for evidence against Jesus so that they could put him to death, but they could not find it. Uh, many testified falsely against him, but their statements did not agree. Then some stood up and gave this false testimony against him. We heard him say, I will destroy this temple made with human hands, and three days will build another not made by human hands. Yet even then, their testimony did not agree. So, Mark brings in the entire test, the temple thing that Jesus was claiming to destroy the temple. And we know that Jesus was claiming to, he was talking about his own body, but that he was superseding the temple. Okay. And that the entire uh, religious, the religion of the Jews was going through the temple, but he's like, no, the entire religion of the Jews need to go through me now. So we know that that's part of Jesus' theology, right? But then the high priest asked him this interesting, interesting question uh, because Jesus is silent. He doesn't give it any answer. And the high priest asked him, Are you the Messiah, the Son of the Blessed One? So Jesus, the, the high priest is asking Jesus straight up, Are you the Son of God? And the, a lot of people say, Oh, Jesus never says he's the Son of God. But here he says, I am. He just straight up... You know, like he, Jesus has been coy the entire time, not wanting to tell people who he is. But here he's like, this is the moment. I'm going to say, I am the Son of God, right? And, the, um, and then he doesn't stop there. He says, I am, and you will see the Son of Man. You remember Daniel 7, 14, right? You will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of the Mighty One coming down on the clouds of heaven. Again, every time that Jesus, someone says Jesus is the Son of God, he starts talking about the Son of Man because that's his preferred title because the Son of God is cannot be understood what the Son of God means without the, the, the Son of Man being there. Together with them. We've talked about the Son of Man, Son of God thing, but it's here again in this passage, right? And so they they do some great I can't believe they do this. They 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 accuse Jesus of blasphemy and they condemn him as worthy of death. And some people spit on Jesus. And they blindfold him and they punch him. They strike him with their fists. Can you imagine? Jesus has finally come out. This is the moment he says, I'm revealing myself as the Son of God. And what's the response? They're going to punch the Son of God. Can you believe that? It's just crazy. Okay, so while that is happening, down in the courtyard, what is happening? The servant girl says, this fellow is one of them. He denies it. And, and Peter denies it. He said, surely you're one of them for your Galilean. He denies it, right? Begin to call down curses and swore to them, I do not know this man you're talking about. Remember the entire first half of the Gospel of Mark is, who is Jesus? And Peter says, you are the Christ. That's the entire point of like the disciples is, they don't get it. But finally, hopefully at the end they get it. And then what happens? It's capped off by G Peter just forgetting and just denying everything that this entire gospel has been about. The entire gospel is about who is Jesus. And Peter says, I do not know Jesus. That's crazy. 
Jesus has just declared who he is so courageously before the Sanhedrin. And the, the high priest's servant girl, Peter can't even say who Jesus is to her. He can't even say he follows her. He can't even or follows him. <coughs> Such a huge contrast. And that's like the Mark and Sandwich again, like bringing these things together. It's crazy, right? Um, comparing these two incidences. And again, we're like, who is Jesus? And even in this last moment, the Gospel of Mark is still dealing with that question. Is Jesus really the Son of God? Is he who he claims to be? Is it who Mark, the Gospel of Mark, the author, claims that Jesus is the Son of God? And Peter himself is denying it. At the end. Okay, so we're going to skip ahead a little bit. Um, Jesus is crucified, right? Um, Jesus is before Pilate. Jesus, uh, and and it start, it, it's interesting because they, they they, Pilate starts calling him the king of the Jews. Again, who is Jesus? Another identity mark. Is he the king of the Jews? Is this who he really is? The, the um, high priest said, are you the son of the blessed one? And the pilot, pilot asks him, um, pilot asked the, Jesus, are you the king of the Jews? And what does Jesus say? You have, you have said so. He's being a little uh, coy again. And Jesus doesn't really reply, right? Because again, what's the meaning of that phrase? It's, it's charged. So Jesus doesn't reply. But the question is still there. The, what is the meaning of that? So then Jesus is crucified. And um, he's crucified, and as Jesus, as he dies, uh, there was a centurion. And the, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. Again, Mark brings in the temple stuff. The temple stuff is very important to the Gospel of Mark. And when the centurion, this is uh, chapter 15, verse 39. And when the centurion who stood there in front of Jesus saw how he died, he said, surely this man was what? The Son of God. Remember, this is the entire point of the Gospel of Mark. It starts out with saying Jesus is the Son of God. And when Jesus dies, he says, the centurion looks and sees how he died. And it's and recognize this is the first time any human being, God has said it before, right? But this is the first time any human being has said Jesus is the Son of God. And it's a centurion. And how does the centurion come to the realization? It's because he said it's he saw how he died. Remember, what does the Son of God mean? Does it mean like coming in power? And Jesus was arguing, no, the Son of God means Son of Man. Son of God means a suffering servant. And seeing how he died is what made the centurion recognize, boom, this is the Son of God. So that's like really cool too. It's just another like little piece to like tie in right there. So then Jesus is buried, um, is taken to the tomb, Joseph um, of Arimathea, and then chapter 16, okay? So chapter 16 is interesting because... Um, there's uh, fear. So the, the women go to the tomb. They see that it has been uh, rolled away. And they're alarmed. And, and then you know the angel says, don't be alarmed. You're looking for Jesus of Nazareth who was crucified. He's risen. He's not here. See the place where they laid him. Go tell his disciples. And Peter. Right? And Peter. He's going ahead of you into Galilee. They will, there you will see them, just as he told you. Trembling and bewildered, the women went out and fled from the tomb. They said nothing to anyone because they were afraid. Okay, so that's the ending of the Gospel of Mark. Um, but the ending of the Gospel of Mark is kind of uh, a matter of debate. So there's a, there's a in most Bibles, there will be another passage, a section that's in there, which is verse 9, chapter 16, verse 9 to 20. And most scholars agree that this is probably not 
the original. It's it's not written in the right style. Some of the stuff is a little weird. Um, there's a lot of arguments why, but most scholars agree that that's probably not in the original manuscripts. The earliest manuscripts that they find don't have that section in it, and it just just ends at sixteen eight. So then the and knowing that the question remains though then um what is the actual ending and um, the the scholars are kind of divided on this some say it just ends there at 16:8 it's like a cliffhanger and because God, um, Mark is so, he wants you to fill, like I said, fill in the, all the blanks yourself, right? Read in between the lines. And see, he's not going to tell you everything. Maybe he's leaving the ending for the, the reader or the audience to fill in. It's like saying, are you going to have faith? You know, uh, the women are afraid. Are you going to have faith? Remember fear and faith, the contrast, right? The other argument is that uh, some scholars believe that the ending is just lost. And um, um, so there, there's a couple different arguments there. I personally, I mean, I don't think, I think we can kind of understand uh, what the, we understand what the Gospel of Mark is about, even without the ending. Um, but I personally don't think that 16.8 is the actual ending. I do think that the, the ending is lost. And the reason be is because um, just like none of the other Gospels end like that. And um, in general, actually in storytelling and in literature, they don't have these kind of like really cliffhanger-ish endings where they ask the audience to fill in with their, our own imagination what happens at the end. That doesn't happen until the 20th century. So all through history, there's no endings like this. No like, and then, so we're saying that the Gospel of Mark ends like this. I think we're, it's probably unlikely. I mean, not to say that it's impossible, but um, it's a 20th century thing to do, a mo very modern literary feature to do like cliffhanger endings here where it's just like, oh, uh, I'm not going to tell you anything. You figure it out. Fade to black. Like that, that kind of thing is a very modern thing. So uh, in ancient history, they don't do that. And it's evidenced by somebody made up this other ending to go with it because they just couldn't, see that this could be the ending so um i don't think ancient people really did that another thing is there's so many loose ends that are not that really tied up um it ends on a note of fear and you know in throughout the gospel of mark that fear and faith are supposed to be contrasted with each other here it has the women being afraid and that's just the end of the gospel of mark eh, could be maybe you're supposed to fill it in with your faith but I don't know. It doesn't really seem like it. And then it mentions Peter specifically. But they didn't really tie... It, like, the Gospel of Mark doesn't tie up, like, whatever happened to Peter. So that's kind of weird, too. Um, and then... Uh, so, I just... I don't think... I, it doesn't seem like this is the actual... It could be. But I personally think that there's probably a little bit more. Um, and you can look at... One of the... The ways you can kind of look at where it might have ended is you can look at the ending of Matthew. Remember, Matthew is largely based on the Gospel of Mark. So it's possible that Matthew actually retains some of the real ending of Mark. If, you know, I'm correct that it, there's more to it. And um, it's pretty, sh it is still pretty short. Uh, but there's like a great commission. There's, um, there's, um, they uh, says in, in in Matthew it says the angel tells the women do not be afraid I know you're looking for Jesus the women hurried away from the tomb afraid yet filled with joy and they ran to tell the disciples and then Jesus suddenly met them right so I think and then Jesus says do not be afraid so that seems like it's more of a right ending it's like oh maybe the um, the win in the gospel of mark there's it seems like if there was an ending it's similar to matthew where the women are not telling anybody but jesus met, meets them and says do not be afraid and then they tell people that that might be an appropriate ending for the gospel of mark also uh, and we know again that matthew kind of takes a lot from the Gospel of Mark, so that could have been the ending of the Gospel of Mark. But it's it's still up for interpretation. Nobody really knows um, which is the real ending. But that's... that's uh, So that's basically the Gospel of Mark there. I think it's been an awesome book. 
Um, I hope you've had fun studying. Obviously, we went through a lot, especially the second half, really quickly. I wish we could study more in depth, and there's a lot more details that we can get into, but I just try to point out some of the things and just wrap it up a little bit. But again, if you have any questions or comments, you can talk to me personally, email, text, call, whatever. All right, thanks.